Hello crypto boys and ghouls and welcome back to the channel Tales from the Cryptmancer where we feature content on play and earn games on the blockchain such as Splinterlands. And in today's video I wanted to go through an exercise with our YouTube fam here talking about uh, understanding kind of what makes a card valuable or desirable specifically the traits uh, the splinters or the elements uh, and or the role that the card plays and what I want to do is I specifically want to evaluate the chaos legion set the core set and look at what cards the top five cards of each rarity what those look like from an ability perspective as well again to understand what makes these cards desirable and ultimately valuable within our ecosystem both playing and from possibly a card value perspective and I think this is very timely and important as we have rebellion launching just here in about about less than two days so let's get into it let's see what we can see we're going to do this in real time I haven't looked at any of these cards so we're going to be doing this on the fly let's do it all right so I'm in peak monsters here I've got filters set for Chaos Legion, regular foil commons to start. And we're at the bottom here looking at the top five most valuable Chaos Legion common cards. Let's take a look at the most valuable one right now, Scavo Hireling, right? What can we tell with this particular card at max value? Well, we can see uh, it's a neutral card for one. And if we actually look at the uh, top five Chaos Legion common cards, three out of the five are neutrals. So that right there kind of uh, gives us a, a leading indicator of, <clears throat> excuse me, what might be considered valuable, right? A, a neutral card that can be used with any splinter, at least for Chaos Legion, um, seems to have an edge in value. Now it could be such that with dual element splinters, or importance of a neutral card may decline a little bit but you know what we can see here is definitely a trend that neutral cards uh, are valuable and if you look at the top six cards right with the disintegrator here uh, top four out of six are neutral all right so what attributes does this card have it has the repair ability it has the camouflage ability and it has the slow ability it is a non-attacking card um, the weapons training buffs haven't been put into the game, so weapons training is not a factor. This card arguably will get stronger with the weapon training buffs coming up, but that's besides the point. So what do we see here? We see abilities like camouflage, which makes the, the card generally untargetable. We see a support ability of repair being valuable, and a uh, speed mechanic of slow being valuable here um, with a low mana cost of three. So let's keep those things in mind here. Perhaps as we look at Rebellion for neutral support cards that have survivability and maybe speed implications and or um, strong support abilities at low mana costs, right? This next one here, Deep Lurker. This is probably pretty obvious on why this card is valuable as a common. It's probably, uh, you know, I went on, I think when the first launch of Chaos Legion, I said this card is, you know, is at least a rare quality, <clears throat> could certainly be confused by or for an epic card. And I mean, you can make the case that you can make it uh, a legendary. I mean, it's <laughs> if Zyvax Vool is a legendary card, there's no reason the Deep Lurker couldn't be. Um, same thing, you know, I mean, you look at things like uh, the um, the Dragon card here. I think it's, a, oh, sorry, I think it's an epic. Uh, let's go here. Uh, is it Untamed? Uh, yeah, Dragon Jumper is a legendary, actually. <clears throat> Dragon Jumper here, seven mana. Compare the stats. Uh, Dragon Jumper, legendary, uh, seven mana, five attack, uh, five speed, seven health, flying opportunity, snare stun. Then we come here to uh, Chaos Legion, common card, deep lurker here. Um, and uh, we see a card that is a six mana, uh, five damage, four speed, seven health demoralize poison opportunity so definitely you can make a case for deep lurker having legendary stats 
as compared to the dragon jumper but that makes it an easy case for us to say why this card is valuable because it just dominates it just is that good if you have a <clears throat> excuse me a 99 mana battle with water i mean there's a real chance that you would consider putting a deep lurker in that lineup even though it only costs six mana and that right there tells you all you need to know super powerful super valuable poison opportunity demoralize high attack good speed good health not really really any negatives to this card other than maybe uh, it doesn't have shields another neutral here supply runner again neutral card support abilities swiftness and strengthen six mana kind of expensive it's got at highest levels three archery damage five speed five health it's not very strong um the, the damage isn't super impressive but again it's a neutral support card that has a speed altering mechanic and swiftness and you know the the ability of strengthen as a support ability is nice as well so what we're seeing here similar to scavo hireling neutral support cards that have speed manipulation and support abilities uh, definitely worthy of consideration for value all right chaos agent another neutral here one mana uh, backfire phase dodge uh, four speed four health what makes this card valuable well it's a budget card that can be used for any splinter it can be used as an off tank um, or a, a main tank or even a sneak defender so that versatility and that mana cost of one definitely something to be looking out for with rebellion cards you know are there support or, or off tanks or, or you know effective tanks at one or two mana that are neutral that'd be something to look at for sure uh, again chaos agent doesn't always do the job uh, as a tank but when it works it works well and gets certainly more than its value in mana back when it does its job so that's something to consider and then last but not least goblin psychic right um, similar to probably Venari Wavesmith and Genoshanus under the Ulrich meta, uh, Goblin Psychic is just all around good with the Chaos Legion Earth Summoners. That being Obsidian, which is plus one magic, and um, also Immortalis with the Void Armor coupled with the Goblin Psychic's Silence. So what we're seeing here is value added because of the extreme synergy with the chaos legion summoners right again you've got um at six mana two magic damage not super impressive one speed certainly not impressive seven health not impressive for six mana but look at the abilities you had a tank heal affliction silence and dispel four support abilities on this common card and all of these support abilities very very strong so again if we take anything away from this the synergy with the summoners uh, for the particular uh, league or i guess the particular meta combined with uh, support abilities similar to supply runner and scavo hireling really probably what makes the goblin psychic uh, be in our top five for value here all right let's move on to the rare cards and probably no surprise here uh, i mean the top five are going to be summoners right for rare um cards and you know it's uh it comes down to well summoners are uh, very valuable in this game um they basically set the pace and the tone for the battles so what is the takeaway here there's always a uh, implied summoner uplift in value and desirability and that will especially be true for rebellion summoners especially those that bring new abilities like dual elements and uh summoner tactics to the battlefield so definitely uh be prepared to pay a summoner markup uh when it comes to value for uh rebellion cards now if we eliminate the summoners here um and we look at the non-summoner uh top five cards first one again no surprise here uh, support card low mana support card tank heal repair and strengthen three mana Merdali guardian here 
Again, we're seeing synergies on what's valuable in these card abilities. Repair on the Scavenger, uh, sca oh, excuse me, Scavel Hireling, and Tank Heal on the Goblin Psychic. Again, what you're seeing here is these two same abilities being highly coveted uh, here along with Strengthen for the Merdali Guardian. So those support abilities seem to have a price premium. Zenith Monk, again, probably no surprise here. We're looking at a neutral card, tank, um, similar to kind of the role of the uh, cast agent, like a budget value here. It's got a self-heal, void, and magic reflect. So again, we're seeing emphasis put on neutral cards that have either tank abilities or support abilities uh, here. Now, the next one, Cursed Windicu. What are we seeing with the Cursed Windicu that makes this card valuable uh, as a card? Uh, well, it's got self-heal, similar to the Zenith Monk. It is element specific at six mana. So again, um, mid-range cost. It's got slow, which is a uh, speed or a uh, time mechanic here. And thorns, uh, which is a defensive ability uh, up front, right, from a tank perspective. So we're seeing elements here of a mid-mana tank with durability uh, and time or speed mechanics um, as a trend. So, so tanks and summoners, certainly we're seeing value added to those cards. And, and similar here with Demon Shark. Again, Demon Shark here, uh, eight mana. It's still considered, I would say, mid-mana for a tank. And what you see here is uh, Trample, Enrage, and Retaliate. And you're seeing big stat pools here of four attack, four speed, six armor, 10 health. So you're seeing uh, defensive mechanics, um, certainly with the Enrage, which increases the speed. But really what you're seeing with, I think, the Demon Shark is a nice synergy of um, offensive uh, damage here, similar to the Deep Lurker and similar to the next card we're going to talk about. What you're seeing is for the price, uh, a tremendous amount of damage output or DPS for this card. With the Enrage, with the Retaliate, with the Trample, all allowing it to do excessive damage out of turn for this particular card. And um, again, it's a tank. In this particular case, it's not a defensive tank, but a supreme kind of example of an offensive tank. Now, the last card to look at here is not a tank. This is similar to the Deep Lurker in that it's a 10 e striker, 5 mana here. We're looking at a sneak attacker with dodge and backfire. It's got high damage, so 5 damage at 5 mana. It's got 4 speed and 7 health. So a very similar stat profile to a Deep Lurker on the uh, water side. It's a little bit different. Um, implementation though it's not opportunity it's sneak um, <clears throat> it has some defensive abilities with its dodge and its base speed as well as some additional offensive capabilities with backfire as a sneak defender as an example so what we're seeing here is kind of a trend we're seeing summoners having value neutral cards having value tanks having value and very effective dps uh, cards or efficient dps cards having value. So these are things to look out for in the upcoming set. Let's go to epics and see if we see any other trends continuing here. If we look at the uh, top five epic cards, let's see based on value, Forgotten One, right? Forgotten One here is a tank. Um, it is mid to high value at nine mana. You can see here it's got immunity, retaliate, piercing, right? High offensive stats six uh, damage at the highest levels, slower speed, but decent shields and decent health. So it's very similar in stature, I guess, or stat wise to the Demon Shark, a little bit higher cost, right? Uh, has a little bit higher damage, but doesn't have enrage, a little slower speed, but about the same shield and health. But what it has is piercing to uh, make sure its offense is really uh, effective and efficient. It's got retaliate, similar to the demon shark right so we're seeing retaliate being a quite valuable support skill here or an ability and last but not least immunity 
This is the first card that we're seeing with immunity here as an ability of value. Probably not the last, to be honest with you, but immunity here on this card being valuable. So again, takeaways for the Forgotten One. Um, good offensive efficiency, tank status, and in this case, retaliate and immunity as abilities. Let's look at the next card here, Grund. Grund, again, a tank, offensive tank. It's got cripple, trample, and double strike. Uh, you can see here the uh, attack value at four. Three is average for speed, no shield, 13 health. This is a higher cost um, card at 10 mana. I think what you're seeing with Grund in this particular example is the value placed on a combined uh, abilities of double strike as well as it being a tank. And uh, that's just my, my takeaway there. Offensive tank with double strike going to usually be valuable, I think, in most circumstances. Let's take a look at the next card here. Uh, this might be a surprise to some folks. It's Jin Inferni here. Uh, this card is seven mana. It's got five uh, magic damage, which is significant. Uh, four speed, which is above average. Weak health at four health. Um, again, uh, abilities, stun, and giant killer. Um, when we talk about cards having value, it's we're seeing offensive cards like Tenny Striker, Deep Lurker, and now Jin Inferni with kits that make it super efficient for the DPS that it brings. You can see here the, the health is not super strong on Jin Inferni, and the cost is somewhat high at seven mana. But what Jin Inferni does is bring um, very efficient DPS to the fire team, and especially coupled with Yasik and its scattershot ability. It can drop stuns down for anything it doesn't instantly kill with five magic damage. And if it hits something that is 10 uh, mana or above as a giant status, it's gonna do double damage, which is in this case, 10 magic damage, which is incredible uh, for seven mana your cost. So again, here we're seeing a, a consistent trend with the right supporting offensive abilities and efficiency, these cards are going to have value, even if, for example, they might be glass cannons here with four health. All right, Wave Brood is our next epic here to evaluate. And this is our first taunting monster that's in the top five here. Uh, what are we seeing with the Wave Brood here besides taunt? We're seeing close range. So it can be used in the first position as well as the last position for a taunter. We're seeing defensive capability of void, and we're seeing offensive capabilities of return fire, which you could also say is a defensive capability as well. Um, so what are we seeing here with this particular um, card? I think the lesson here is if you have a taunter, that can be used both effectively in the first position as well as the last position for both defense and offense, that seems to have value versus just, for example, like a shield bearer uh, type card or a night ghoul card, which is really only effectively used currently in the first position. Now that could change in the future with flank and other things, for example, but right now, um, I think we're seeing in this particular case, um, the synergy maybe with Kelia um, you know, with the shield, with the void, with things like Merdali, uh Guardian providing repair options. Or, you know, I think we're seeing a good synergistic tank that just works well as a taunter for water. Last but not least, Magi of Chaos. Again, a neutral card here. Magi of Chaos, uh, six mana neutral, four magic damage, uh, two speed is below average speed, seven health for six mana. It's just probably average. So what makes this card valuable? Well, I think, again, it comes down to it being a neutral card that can be used currently in any um, lineup. Uh, it provides a, uh, a very easy to access, high DPS um, or efficient DPS magic damage for any splinter. Um, six mana, four magic DPS, plug and play. Um, that is kind of like the definition of uh, efficient um, DPS or attacker uh, because of the neutral splinter 
tag on this one. So I think that's uh, reaffirming kind of what we were seeing in some of these other trends here for what makes a card valuable or desirable. All right, let's wrap it up here with legendaries, our top five legendary cards. Again, no surprise, they're all gonna be legendary summoners, right? So um, it goes without saying, summoners have a premium and an added value in Splinterlands. They are going to be the most valuable. But if we remove the summoners from this evaluation, what are we looking at as the next top five? Well, the results here are probably not gonna be super surprising. Let's look into it. The first one, Queen Mycelia. Again, a support card, right? Support card here, four mana. If we look at the support abilities, we might see some stuff that's interesting. Protect, Amplify, Triage, and Rust. Um, these are all abilities we really haven't um, seen in other cards in this kind of top five evaluation. Protect though, uh, certainly a strong case for that being valuable. Amplify, Triage, Rust. So these are all, uh, I would say, um, uh, maybe not top tier. I mean, I think you could say Protect and Rust are probably top tier support abilities. Triage, you might say is high tier. Um, but what you're seeing here is really for four mana um, and the synergy with Obsidian, you're just seeing a card that is um, just kind of a must have or add from a support ability in a Earth lineup. Just that uh, Protect and Rust combination is so valuable. Triage, again, with a Mycelic Slip Spawn is very valuable. So you're seeing here um, just, just support abilities that are too hard to turn down uh, for the value here at four mana. Let's look at the next card here. Um, probably no surprise here. Bakhtir, the tank here. Uh, unique pretty much in the Chaos Legion format. The only thing that might come close to it could be the c rack but it's not at the same level uh, and what you have with bakjira is similar to what you had with the um, gelatinous cube in the wild format is you have a tank uh, that's super sturdy like has a huge health pool with a self-heal that once you put strengthen on it and void and it has a uh, speed mechanic associated with it as well you put a cleanse in the team and just there's certain teams i just cannot get through the front tank and if you don't have scatter shot if you don't have opportunity snipe or sneak you're just not going to get through this card and you're just gonna um, lose basically so this card is a tank it's a game-changing tank and that's why it's on this list look out for those game-changing tanks tanks that really stop your opponent from getting through it things like agor longtail things like bakjira these are tanks that are unbelievably stout and these are things that uh, we need to be looking out for in the new set. All right, the next card here, Spirit Hoarder. Probably again, no surprise, neutral. Neutral support card. Um, it's got Blind, Dispel, and Triage. Um, three mana, so it's a support card that's low cost, good support abilities, and neutral. Nothing more needs to be said at this point in time of the video. These are all winning attributes for a card to be valuable. Carnage Titan, right? Similar to Grund, what we're seeing is value placed on um, tanks or off tanks that have double strike, right? High offensive output, that four, that sweet spot of four base damage with double strike, too, too good. So if there's anything with double strike and around that four damage uh, or around that range, even three damage, uh, definitely something to consider as a valuable offensive card just because of its efficiency. And last but not least, we have Adelaide Brightwing closing out this video for us. Again, min mana cost at seven mana, but look at these support abilities. Resurrect, Swiftness, again, speed mechanic there. It's got immunity and repair uh, as well as flying. So what you're looking at there is valuable support abilities that are just too good for life. The Swiftness, the Resurrect, and the Repair. That's why you bring Adelaide Brightwing to your team for those abilities. And again, when you're looking at abilities in Rebellion that carry over from Chaos Legion, speed mechanics like Swiftness and Slow, very important. Resurrect, important. Repair, important. Certainly immunity for tanks. 
Um, not so much maybe for Adelaide Brightwing, but you know, not a bad ability to have for Noxious Fume battles. Again, Noxious Fume, Earthquake, Flying Immunity, good, good things to have on the stat line. So there you go. This is our quick rundown of analysis on understanding, you know, what makes a card valuable. What are the traits? What are the roles? What are the elements? What are the support abilities? Hopefully uh, after this video, you'll kind of have a good feeling for what things to look for in your rebellion cards um, that you might want to focus on um, moving forward. And I hope this video has been beneficial to you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, keep stacking those stats.